So today's Bible study is on Joshua 4, and we start off with in verses 1 through 3. God told Joshua to get 12 men, one from each tribe, and have them bring the stones from where the priest stood in the middle of the Jordan and put them down at the place where they stayed that night. I'm sorry if you hear my chair squeaking. <laughs> but they had, I put, they had to step in the water in order to cross on dry land. So when you open up on Joshua 4, going back to Joshua 3, do you remember when it said that they had to put themselves, put their feet in the water? Um, when you reach the edge of the Jordan's waters, and I'm reading Joshua 3, verse 8. When you reach the edge of the Jordan's waters, go and stand in the river. So they had to put their faith, they had to stand in the water first in order to cross over on dry ground. And it's just kind of making me think of situations in my life where I felt like God was prompting me to do something, but I had to take the first step. And that first step can sometimes be really scary. But when you take that step and trust God, he will allow you to cross on dry land. So we open up with Joshua 4, the, when the whole nation, not a single person was left behind. Furthermore, we'll continue reading. Um, the army also crossed, the entire army, all the men. So um, verses four through seven, the stones stood as a memorial so that they can go back and remember the testimony. And that's important. It's important to remember what God has brought you through. Verses eight through nine, the Israelites, the Israelites listened, which, um, you know, their forefathers didn't always listen to, you know, what Moses had told them to do. But in this instance, we see that Joshua instructed them to do something. He was instructed by God and he passed on those instructions and they listened. And then verse 10 through 13, 40,000 armed men crossed. So this took, this took a while. You know, this was a, a huge process, getting everyone over, all of the men, and then getting the stones across. And I imagine it was giant stones. In verse 14, the Lord, it said that the Lord exalted Joshua. And for some reason, when I read that, I thought of Saul. Remember when we read about Saul in 1 Samuel? Well, Saul, it was the opposite. He had an opportunity to be exalted by God. But God won't exalt those who don't first exalt him and put him first. If you're living a life that's not humble, if you're self-centered, only thinking about yourself, only thinking about your own needs, not seeking God, but seeking the interests of yourself and exalting yourself, God will not exalt you. In fact, God will quickly humble you, trust me. <laughs> so... You know, Joshua was exalted because he lived a life where, and you, would, you'll, you can read, it says God told Joshua, you know, and then he would instruct Joshua. Well, Joshua walked closely with God. And so the Lord exalted him just as he did with Moses. Verses 15 through 18, the Lord told Joshua to have the priests come out of the Jordan River and the water returned to the flood stage immediately. So as soon as, you know, it was time for them to move on, it was time for them to move on. So imagine one person said, no, I want to stay here or we should do this. You know, let's stay here a little while longer. You know, you can't. You have to move when God tells you to move. Again, it reminds me of when we read 1 Samuel. How long will you mourn for Saul? Samuel mourned for Saul for far too long. You know, sometimes we dwell in a certain place for far too long and we need to keep it moving or the floodwaters will come and God's favor will move and then we will be stuck in a situation that God didn't never intended us to be in. So, you know, it's great when God is instructing us to do something and it's great when we're in the midst of that miracle, but sometimes it's time to keep going forward. It's time to keep moving. They used the stones as a memorial to remember what God has done for them and they had to keep going. So as soon as the priests came back over, the floodwaters rose again. So keep going, keep going forward. I think that this chapter is, it's important for them to remember what God brought them through, not only them, right, this current generation, but also the generations prior. And so, you know, having those 12 stones there as a reminder for generations to come, they can lean on that faith and remember what God did for them in the past. Um, this chapter is also helpful to remind us present day that when God says move, we got to move. You know, if God says, all right, that's it, let get the priests back over then get the priests back over, you know, tell the priests to get out of the middle of the Jordan because the waters, you know, God's favor will be moving soon. It's important to realize when it's time to keep it moving, when it's time to move forward. 
So that's all. That's all I have for today. Let me know what you learned. I love reading your comments. And I just want to reiterate, because I don't know, maybe there's some new people. I don't, you know, I just, I'm just a regular, normal person just studying the Bible. So if you have any comments, let me know what you think. And, you know, if I'm wrong, then just let me know. Let's just use kind words to each other, okay? Um, but I post a new Bible study video on Wednesdays and Fridays at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I can't wait to study the Bible with you again. Bye.